I'm just going to do that. Okay. Just want to talk about a few things. I think it's so critical right now. My sister told me, why do you always talk about the fierce urgency of now? And it is because we are really talking about the urgency of right now and looking at public education and what's happened over time and the failure of public services for African-American children in public schools. You would think that uh, somehow that's just supposed to happen. Somehow you sign up for public school in your local area and you have access to real resources. It's just unfortunate that it doesn't happen that way. Many times you're prohibited or prevented from accessing early start programs because they're free if you qualify. But it is if you qualify or someone qualifies for you for the program. But if you don't manage to get in one of those early start programs, actually, you are prohibited. You struggle with placing your children wherever. And I cannot say that they're really ready for public education when it starts. So you start school as a kindergartner. If you can't transition and do those things that they expect you to do in the kindergarten, you're not ready. And so immediately they start documenting you as having behavioral issues that impede you from engaging in the process, in this very public process in which people get paid to ensure that access happens. <clears throat> We all pay some form of taxes, and if we don't pay taxes, someone is um, benefiting by providing you a service. So in poverty, it's kind of like the system just sustains or supports itself by tax dollars and community charity and state allocations. But when you're in poverty, the state has guaranteed that it would support people in poverty. I think that came from when the integration of the public schools happened under Brown versus the Board of Education and Blacks moved into public schools. Then they tried to, you know, self-support some of the impact of educating all kids. So the states usually do get federal money for poor kids, not Black kids, but poor children, and money for disabled because they made rules that enable poor and children with disabilities to participate in the very public process that's mandated under federal law, under compulsory education. And so under compulsory education, the states are, they count their children in poverty and they just count all the children under the census. Here we are, here we are, census, census 20, 20, and understand that this is about the count. How many people and what they what they look like, what their lives are about, and how much need do they have. This is an opportunity for all states to count all their needy people so that they can get funding back from the federal government to ensure that they can provide access to services for those children. It's kind of like, I wonder sometime, where are the rest of the people? I know that I have worked in the past with um, Maxine Pepper and Maria Elena and Tony and there's just I mean there's so many people that I work with and Angie and Angel and just name them and advocacy for what's happening at the local level for all children in Sacramento but when I moved here to Las Vegas it's a whole different animal Las Vegas where they have 15,000 homeless children sleeping on the streets every night. Where they have all these casinos. The casinos don't pay taxes. Well, hell, I don't think the people pay that much in taxes either. <clears throat> but we do get federal money because we do have poor people. We have bilingual people. We have Native Americans. We have an Air Force base here. Money comes here federally. How do they allocate those dollars? Now that's a different kind of thing. Because I found something on the net that talks about the inequities, inequities in education and how they actually budget their money and budget the local schools and how it's difficult to get people to work in certain school situations. 
whether it's high poverty or high need. And I'm just trying to understand what local control means when local control says that you can look at the evidence of what the outcomes are and actually engage in the process of oversight. But here in Las Vegas, they kind of like keep you out. You're not really invited in. And that's amazing to me because the level of poverty here is real. And the level of education here is real too. And they have some very educated people and then they have some very uneducated people. And they have a lot of people who need services. And so there's a lot of free giveaway stuff. But I don't believe that just getting something free is going to enable you to be self-sustaining. But when you look at the public education system here, and it's difficult to find out what's happening in each one of the school sites because that information is really not provided publicly. And then the board meetings are very unusual. They have lobbyists that participate in presenting to the, the board. And they have a lot of third party providers. Actually, current involvement here is done by a group named Faces. And it was just a couple of grandmothers who got together who saw a need and could fulfill it. But guess what? When they mandate that process for everyone, and that process just doesn't afford to reach to your community, then I, I question the process. I question the process of anywhere where they would mandate a child to attend a public education system where they not, when they can't reach beyond third grade or fifth grade reading level. When they have so many kids who are far, far below basic. When they're not holding themselves accountable to the achievement or the engagement of people where they have an opportunity to engage in public society and self-sustain themselves. And you know, sustainability is everything. Skills are everything. I don't see skill-based programs that will target and lead people to have the opportunity unless you engage the children at an earlier age. Right now, I think that we know that there are a lot of children who are not at grade level who are, not, who are receiving less credits because they required to go to school in a shorter period of times. And, you know, they do a lot of tricky, unique things here. But I can't see the work being done around the lowest achieving student or the neediest student. You can't see the work that's being done in those communities because you can't see the work and you can't benefit and you can't understand what's happening because these people are not presenting what they're doing. It's like a principal led. All the principals have all the power. And every time I've ever seen anything about what's happening in this district, it, it has to do with uh, people having the ability to be privileged in a situation and choose their how they access the community and actually how they just access the community. It's just like none of your business. I beg your pardon. I was born and I am living. And as long as I am living, I have questions about the sustainable options given for all people and how people are expected to survive in America. In Las Vegas, especially because this is the entertainment capital of the world. And I question the fact, I question the process in which they determine the social lives of black people. And I really am talking about the social lives of black people and how they can edit your videos prior to you completing them. That's why I'm happy to have this program, Zoom, and I'll be sending out invitations to try to engage other people in the conversation because my conversation is all real. And uh, it's a thing we need to talk about. It's an urgent situation when across the nation you can see African-American children not thriving in the public school system, but mandated to attend. And I'm, I mean, yeah, there are all kinds of barriers to public education. We can talk about barriers all day long. But what we can't talk about are the reasons why children are not, not being given the opportunity to learn the tasks expected and measure that measurement of the benefit, maintenance of effort that's happening in communities where poor children are. I don't see it. And so because I don't see it, then I can assume it's not happening because if you look at the end data, and the number of the so few number of children who are able to thrive and benefit here 
because of the number of children who are homeless on the street and the evidence of the number of families who are totally homeless living on the street and the acceptance of that in the community. And even with the city council choosing to criminalize people who have no place and no services and nowhere to be, but you could be criminalized and forced to be in situations where you might be, your safety might be at risk. But I'm gonna stop for now and I hope to come back and record more later.